we're going to go through and introduce um, some people that are going to be talking today. Um, to start off, I'm Megan. I am a first year admissions counselor. I work with Northwestern Iowa um, and Minnesota, as well as a few feeder, feeder schools here in Des Moines. Um, Jace, do you want to go ahead and go next? Yeah, so my name is Jace. I am also a first year admissions counselor. I work primarily with students on the eastern side of Iowa, Illinois, and Wisconsin. And I also oversee and advise our Team GD, which are our tour guides on campus. And I will have them go ahead and introduce themselves. So Hannah, do you want to start? Yeah, so I'm Hannah. I'm a sophomore here. Um, I'm a nursing student from Cedar Rapids, and then I'm on the dance team, and I'm also part of REC, as well as a tour guide. Very good. And then Maddie? Hi, I'm Maddie. I'm also a sophomore, and I'm also a nursing student with a Spanish minor. Um, I'm also on Team GV, so I'm a tour guide, and then I'm also an RA, and I'm from a tiny town called Roland, Iowa, just north of Ames. Perfect. And then we also have somebody from Student Life here. Um, Robbie, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, everyone. I'm Robbie Patterson. I'm the Assistant Director of Residence Life here. Um, so I actually work a lot with uh, Maddie and Anna and their teams um, with the resident assistants, uh, which Maddie had mentioned, and then the Residential Experience Council, uh, which Hannah had mentioned, uh, we abbreviate as REC. Perfect. So um, I did include in the chat room um, a few different links that we have available for students. Our first link is going to be our in-person visit link. So technically we are doing in-person visits if you are comfortable coming on campus and those are going to be personalized. So if you wanted to meet with faculty, coaches, um, we'll go over admissions and financial aid and then you would also get to tour campus. That would be the visit link for that. We are also doing virtual visits. So if you're not so comfortable going out yet, um, we do have that option available through Zoom. Um, for seniors, if you have not applied yet, we would love if you could apply to Grandview. That way we can get your information and get you admitted. And then I also included the freshman through junior um, info sheet. So if you wanna go ahead and fill that out, we'll get your contact information and basically just gets you in our system so we can make sure that um, we can communicate with you when we need. And then, um, oh, some people aren't seeing it. So let me go ahead and share it. Okay, so there is that for you, some of the different links. You might have to just write them down um, if you can't see them in the chat. But um, I also included the recruitment link. So, um, if you were interested in athletics, which I know a couple of you kind of had a question on that on the RSVP sheet about recruitment and athletics and being involved in sports. So that would be the recruitment link for that. Um, anytime you guys have any questions, feel free to personally message me um, and then we will get those questions answered. But first things first, we're gonna have Megan go ahead and talk to you a little bit about an overview of res life. So residence life, there are a few different housing options for you to take advantage of while you're here on campus. So with those, um, let me see if I can, for some reason it's not letting me screen share. Jace, would you mind pulling up the videos for me? Sure, give me one second here. I can send you the link really fast. So we're gonna watch two different videos. The first one is going to be our standard traditional freshman dorms. Um, these are called Knutson and Nielsen. Um, they're very similar. There's not much of a difference between the two, but you'll be able to see the slight differences within the video. The second one is our suite style dorms um, called Langrock. So Langrock is primarily um, nursing students within that freshman or first year. That third floor is gonna be all nursing students. Um, the videos are slightly old, so there is a point where they say Knutson or Langrock is mostly freshmen. At this point, it's a good mix of both freshmen and sophomores. So, Jace, if you want to go ahead and play that first video. Hi, my name's Shelby, and right now we're in Knutson Hall. Let me go show you the third floor because that's where I live. So when you go to Knutson, you'll get a key card, and you'll use your key card to get into the rooms. You just slide it across the handle, and the light should turn on. This is my room. When you come in, there'll be 
big key too. So this is how you get into your actual room. This here is a lovely Knudsen room. It's uh, got two bunk beds, and it's got uh, two dresser drawers, and it also has um, a shelf for lighting, and also has two desks and two chairs that go along with it. Also, over here, we have plenty of room for your clothes, and they come in with built-in drawers to pull out nicely, and you can fit all your personal belongings in there. only freshman building on campus. Uh, there's another building right next to it. It is Nielsen Hall, where it also houses uh, new students. Welcome to Nielsen. This is also another building on campus where we house freshmen. And this right here that you're seeing is the first floor lounge. The students just come and hang out and study, chill, watch TV. And over here is our freshman face-off traveling trophy. Um, every year we have a friendly competition between floors and freshman buildings, now including Lang Rock since it's newer. And we just um, see who can get the most points throughout the year. And at the end of the year, that floor will have a prize and um, donate $100 to the charity of their choice. Now, when you come into Nielsen on the floor, they're a little different than Knudsen. Uh, the rooms are the same, but when you come in, there's usually a big lounge area. And my freshman year, I know that a lot of the girls just hung out here and we had a good time, studied, and we yeah, got to know each other. There's also three floors in Nielsen, too. Now down in the basement is also where uh, the laundry is, and I'll show you that. And this is the Nielsen laundry room. And one of our uh, most favorite places in Nielsen is Bud's Place. You come down here and just uh, chill and play some pool, watch TV. We have ping pong, we have foosball, and we have a big uh, screen projector that uh, you can know, watch movies on and you can play music. Well, thanks for coming, and we're looking forward to seeing you on campus. Okay, and then the next one we are going to watch is Lang Rock. Like I said, this is going to be our suite style dorms. Um, if you are interested in the end pod, this is where our end pod is housed. Um, a lot of our other freshmen will end up in the traditional dorms um, just due to um, spacing uh, for our older students. Um, but Jace, if you want to go ahead and play that one for us. Hi, my name is Raquel. I'm standing outside Lang Rock Suites. This is where mostly freshmen live, and it's one of the newer freshman residential buildings on campus. So let me take you inside and show you around. This is the first floor lobby. This is where first New Year students will come in and check in and get their keys on their first day. There's a couple of vending machines if you get hungry and don't have anything in your room. But besides that, I'll take you up to the third floor. So this is the third floor. Um, we took the stairs, but there is an elevator over here. I just prefer to take the stairs as opposed to the Here's my green floor. So this is our living room. In the suites, we have a living room and two bedrooms. And both of the bedrooms are two-person bedrooms. You can choose to design it however you want. It comes with a couch and that coffee table right over there. Um, all the rest is up to you. You can design it all by yourself. So let me take you into a standard room that freshmen live in, or some sophomores. So this is what the bedrooms look like. They come with two beds and some bookshelves, two bookshelves, one per person, a desk, one desk per person, 
two drawers, two dressers, and a wardrobe. The wardrobes are pretty ready too. So being a girl, I like it because I can fit all my clothes in there. So, and then I can take you to the other side and show you what your room can look like if you're an RN. So this is my bedroom. I chose to push my beds together, and it actually makes a king-size bed, which is pretty sweet when you're a college student, you don't have a budget, you don't have to have a little tiny trick-size bed. Um, I get both of the desks, for both people, bookshelves, where all my books are, and then I guess on MTV Cribs, they usually show you what's in the fridge, so let me show you what a college student typically has in their fridge. So we got some Gatorade, we got some cheese sticks, we got some apples, yogurt, chicken breast. That's pretty uh, much a, a typical college freshman refrigerator. These bathrooms are pretty nice, actually. It comes kind of with a plain white curtain, but you can replace it with a pretty curtain, or if you don't want to, that's cool too. And plenty of sink room for all the girls. But before we go out, let me show you the laundry room. It's downstairs on the second floor. Perfect. Right. Okay. So we will go ahead. I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Um, and we're going to go ahead and open it up to a panel discussion. Um, as we mentioned before, we do have Robbie, um, who works in Res Life. Maddie, she is an RA and she's also on Team GV. And then we have Hannah, who's on Rec, which is our more like student activities and residence life activities. Um, and then she's also on Team GV as well. So um, I'm just gonna pick from a couple of questions that we had on the RSVP list. Um, these ones are a little bit more admissions related, but we'll go ahead and get them out of the way first. So someone mentioned that they, a couple of people mentioned that they would love to be involved in athletics. So I will go ahead and put that recruitment link back up on the chat in just a second. That's how you would get in contact with coaches. Otherwise, doing that personalized visit on campus is another way to get connected. Um, and then I had two students who actually had the same question um, about classes to go on to med school and chiropractic school. So um, here at Grandview, we do have um, a Bachelor of Science degree in biology. That is going to be more of our pre-professional pre degree for students who are gonna be continuing their education in the medical field. Um, so someone mentioned being an OBGYN, you would do your Bachelor of Science here at Grandview, and then you would go ahead and take your MCAT so you can get into med school, and then you would continue your education in med school. And that same goes for chiropractic school, but um, you would go to chiropractic school instead of med school. So those were the questions we had in the RSVP link. If you guys have any questions, um, students watching, feel free to just personally message me um, and we can get those answered for you. But we'll go ahead and get started. Maddie, do you want to talk about being an RA and kind of your job on campus and what you do? Yeah, sure. So I've been an RA for about a month now and I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, the main thing is I'm just here for all the students who live on my floor. You know, if they ever need anything, I'm always here for them to chat. Um, if they're ever having roommate problems, I'm also here um, as a resource for them and for anything that they need. Um, throughout the semester, we, all the RAs also do events on the floor. So um, our most recent event here was we did pumpkin painting and tacos. 
So that was really fun. Um, there's tons of different events that people do. I was thinking about maybe doing a yoga night or something like that. So those are some really fun events. And then we're also here, you know, if a floor, if a room is too loud, we're here um, for that as well. And um, yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit with Robbie, maybe. Um, let's talk about how students can pick out their, um, and I guess this is open to Maddie and Hannah as well, but to kind of talking about kind of the timeline of residence life. So when will students find out about their roommate placements and then their room placements? Yeah, so the, that piece of information will both come at the same time, both what the room assignment is, as well as who the room is. Um, and we usually shoot for mid-June on those uh, to get those shared out so people can start planning ahead as far as who's going to bring what different items and, and make sure that that's all sorted out. Perfect. Um, Maddie and Hannah, do you guys want to talk about your experience as a student when picking out your roommates? Yeah, I can go first. Um, me personally, so I lived in NPOD, so I had to pick three other roommates. Um, mine were all random, but I had the opportunity since I am on the dance team. Um, my coach messaged us on Facebook and asked if I wanted to live with another freshman. So um, I know multiple other sports teams do this where you can choose to room with someone else on your team. But all my um, roommates were nursing students through NPOD and then I had my dancer friend. Perfect. And then Maddie, how did you pick out your roommate? Um, yeah, so my freshman year, I also lived in the end pod. So there were three other people that I lived with. Um, the girl that I shared a bedroom with, we actually found each other. And so we decided that we wanted to live together. So there's a form online that we filled out. Um, and then the other two roommates were random roommates. Um, but this year now that I'm a sophomore and I obviously know more people, I picked my roommates this year. Perfect. Um, so typically, Robbie, you can correct me if I'm wrong or add to whatever, but typically um, if you know somebody that you would like to room with, you can let your admissions counselor know or you can call over to the residence life office and we can get that arranged for you. It has to be a mutual agreement, so both of the roommates need to connect with admissions or residential life. Um, and then we also will place you kind of further along in the semester, sometime after the holiday season, typically. We'll place you in a couple social media pages. Um, I know a lot of students like to make like a little uh, profile on there and kind of talk about themselves and what they like and what they don't like. And then that way is another way of connecting with students um, who will be in your class and finding roommates that way. Um, and then the last option is a random roommate. So we do have the housing contract. Um, I know I've had a couple of questions from students about the housing contract. If you've paid your deposits, those should be coming out within the next couple of weeks. And that's where you would do that little questionnaire um, talking about maybe study habits, sleeping habits, um, and we'll kind of pair you that way. Robbie, do you have anything to add about that? Uh, yeah, you just, uh, and Maddie also mentioned filling out the form uh, to request a specific roommate. So that same place where you list your preferences, if you do have a specific person in mind, you can also fill out their name in that place. Uh, so that's all one form. Uh, if you don't have someone in mind, though, you can just leave that piece of it blank. Perfect. And Robbie, remind me that you can um, go back in and adjust or add a person later on to your housing contract. That is true. Up until the end of May, uh, any changes you make are completely fine. Uh, I, in housing, we don't do kind of the final download of all of that information until the beginning of June. Uh, anytime after that, it's just kind of on a case to case basis. Those changes are not. Perfect. And I did just get a question. Um, someone was asking, how much is the housing deposit? So the housing deposit is going to be $200. It's separate from your enrollment. Your enrollment deposit is going to be 100 non-refundable. Um, and then once the housing deposit is paid, you will get that link um, that we keep talking about that housing contract that will be sent out within a couple of days of paying that housing deposit. So, um, Maddie and Hannah, do you guys want to talk about NPOD a little bit? 
I know we keep mentioning it, but kind of like what it is, um, how you go about it, the application process, kind of your experience. We can talk about it. Perfect. So um, NPOD is for all um, pre-nursing students. So it's all freshmen who are going to be studying nursing. Um, there's a separate application that you do fill out online on Granby's website. And um, so you fill that out and then I don't know for sure, um, Jace or Robbie, if there's a special um, or another fee that you have to pay to be an NPOD. I believe it's 50, is that correct, Robbie? Yep, 50 per semester, which I believe is uh, like a registration type fee for some of the uh, programs that are used. Okay, yeah, so then you also pay that as well. Um, but one thing that's really nice about NPOD is everybody who was living on my floor we were all taking the same um, prerequisite classes last year, you know, like biology, microbiology, chemistry, stuff like that. So we were all able to study together, which is one thing that I really um, enjoyed. So that was really nice. And then also we have meetings throughout the semester where nursing professors come in and um, talk to us about different things. So one time we talked about um, kind of like self-care and what you can be doing to take care of yourself when school is stressful. Um, we also talked about like mental health, um, just a bunch of different things that can really help you um, just throughout the semester. So that was really nice. And it's just nice um, when you get into nursing classes, you already know these professors. So that's one thing that I found super helpful. Very good. Hannah, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, so at the end of your freshman year for nursing, you'll have to take a test to actually get into the program. And the advisors throughout the meetings will help you study for it, um, have like focus areas that you should really know. And they tell you testing strategies so you can really work with them to feel confident going into the test. And then I also agree with Maddie. I really liked NPOD. We would prop our doors open. And when I'd walk back to my room, I'd see someone's door open and they were doing a Kahoot. So I'd walk in and we'd all study together at random times. Or if you have a question on an assignment, you could just go knock on the door and get help right away. Perfect. Very good. All right. Let's see. It looks like we just got a question about how much housing is each year. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and show you guys um, kind of an idea of what it will be for your the freshman class. So the students who are seniors currently in high school, what it would be when you are a student. So right here, um, our total for residential students with tuition is going to be right under 41,000. That is our sticker price. So no student will ever pay that much. We have academic scholarships available to every single student that's accepted here at Grandview. Um, as far as room and board prices for our double dorms, our traditional freshman dorms, we, um, we always encourage students to do the all access five meal plan. And that is going to be the room and board for um, the total year right there. So Robbie, do you have anything to add about that or Megan? No, I had kind of my own info I was gonna share. Yeah, I'm go for it. All of it. No, that's the exact info I had. Okay, so, perfect. Megan, did you have anything to add on that part? Uh, the differences between the two meal plans, when we say all access five or all access seven, all access, it just means how many days a week you're gonna have access to the dining center. Just because you choose the all access five plan does not mean that you cannot go to the dining center on Saturday or Sunday. Um, you just use your declining balance points instead of your standard meal plan. The nice thing with the all access meal plans as well is that means you can go to the dining center as many times as you want during your days. So all access five would be Monday through Friday. All access seven would be all seven days of the week. And then one other thing I did think of, and, and I never want to overstep kind of financial aids. Oh, you're good. But my, from what I understand of how uh, your financial aid package works, there's a uh, what they call a housing incentive. That's $1,000 per semester. Uh, so that gets worked right into whether it's a grant or a scholarship or whatever you have. It's it's included in that package. It won't show up as a separate line. Um, but for residential students, everyone does get that extra 1000 per semester. Perfect. Awesome. All right. So it doesn't look like I have any other questions about housing, 
But um, Hannah, do you want to talk about your experiences on REC and what REC is? Yeah, so this is my first year on REC, and REC stands for Residence Experience Council. So we just hold um, fun events for the residents to get involved in on campus. This is a great way for freshmen to meet a lot of people. Um, just by coming to the event, you're always going to meet a new person every time. Um, tomorrow, we're holding a spooky movie night since it's close to Halloween. Um, we just got done with our bingo night, and that's one of our biggest events. Um, we had prizes like an Apple Watch, a $500 ticket voucher, um, TVs, so a whole bunch of fun prizes. And so it's just a really fun way for students, or specifically residents, to get involved on campus. And this is especially like really fun during COVID times because there is not a lot of stuff going on, but we're able to like create safe events for students to still get out of their dorms and go do something. Perfect, very good. Um, I did just get a question and the question um, is, what is the likelihood or the chance that they would be able to get into some of the upperclassmen dorms as incoming freshmen? Robbie, do you wanna tackle that one? Definitely, yeah. Uh, so it really varies year to year. Um, this year with our overall housing numbers being a little down uh, as more people are choosing to commute and kind of stick away from uh, the, the living experience, uh, we're able to get a, a higher number. Um, for NPOD, it's, I think we've always had space every year to get everyone from NPOD in that sophomore style suite housing. Uh, and then for freshmen, it just depends how many of our returning students sign up each year. So uh, I think last year we had maybe only eight or so freshmen uh, that made it outside of NPOD. This year, I think we had probably close to 30. Uh, and it, so it just varies a lot year to year. Um, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll really just kind of see how, how things are looking for next year. But um, the earlier that everything in housing is finished, the better the odds of being able to get into that type of housing. Perfect. I did just get a question. Um, can freshmen or the freshman dorms air conditioned? Someone want to tackle that one? Uh, yeah, I can, I can get that one as well. Uh, so they do not have central air within those buildings. Uh, but we do have a form that students can fill out if there's a medical need. Um, so that can be something as simple as allergies or asthma. Um, but if there's a need for a window air conditioning unit, we have about 60 of those available uh, that we can put in each individual room as needed. Perfect. And then um, another question about freshman dorms. Um, is it required for freshmen to live on campus? Uh, quick answer would be yes, but the, the longer answer would be uh, we do have some exemption criteria. Uh, so the students living with a parent or a grandparent uh, who's within 30 miles of Grandview, that would be something we'd say, okay, that's a good reason to, to not be on campus. and. Uh, and studying from home. Uh, if, say, a non-traditional student who's over 22 years old or has been uh, graduated high school, I think for this incoming class, it would be 2018, maybe 2019. Um, basically, if you're three years out of high school, uh, you'd qualify to live off campus. And then there's a few other ones in there, but those are kind of the main two uh, that would exempt a student from that housing requirement. Yeah, and kind of um, going off of that from an admission standpoint, we do encourage our first year students, even if they live within the metro area, to maybe live on campus their first year. That way they can um, kind of get familiar with the things that are offered on campus, like things through rec or just different activities that we have going on and get that college experience. And then of course, afterwards, if you live within the metro area and wanna live at home, it is a great way of saving money. So, but it is encouraged to maybe try it that first year, just so you can make friends and build those relationships and kind of get accustomed to that college life. So um, let's see. So Robbie, do you want to talk a little bit about kind of um, the steps that Grandview is taking in uh, as a reaction for the COVID and everything that's going on with that? Yeah, and it's really a combo of, of 
our policies on one side and, and trying to set things up physically so that it's possible for people to social distance. Um, and then a lot of it is just in the hands of, of each individual to make responsible choices and uh, be thoughtful about what's going to be safe for them as well as others. Um, so on, on more of that individual levels, we always encourage masks, social distancing, uh, kind of that six foot space out. Um, but then on the other side of things, we've, we've set aside uh, quarantine rooms throughout the residence hall. So if someone uh, is starting to exhibit symptoms or if they're, say, have been tested and haven't even gotten the results yet, uh, we give them that option to isolate in one of those spaces. Uh, we've tried to open up more single rooms, uh, especially with our, our housing numbers being a little bit down this year. Uh, has given us the opportunity to let more people live in single rooms. Um, and then I, uh, Jay, sir, Megan, you might be able to speak more to kind of the classroom side of things, but um, I know in the residence halls, we've got the sanitizer stations that uh, a few are actually even being added in the, the next couple of weeks here. Um, and uh, especially in the apartment housing, I think easy for people to kind of have their own private room and just stick to that whatever level they need to. Yeah, and then as far as the rest of the um, campus, we are a high flex model this year, um, which means that students have the option to either live on campus or to go into person on, uh, on campus, go in person to classes, um, do it asymptomatic or do it online at the exact same time, like log on to the Zoom classes, or do it completely on their own um, and just turn in their work um, by themselves. So that kind of gives students different options. So if they are in the process of getting tested or waiting for results, they are not um, needing to go into the classrooms. Perfect. So I did just get a question from a student um, and they, this is kind of a question for Maddie and Hannah. Um, and it says, um, how does the first day of college look like for a freshman? I can talk about this. So um, I feel like the first day is kind of scary, but um, there's so many people who are there to like help you out on the first day. Like one thing that I have definitely learned is like, there's no stupid questions. You know, if you don't know where you're going, like somebody will help you and all that stuff. And then another thing that's really nice is I think freshmen typically move in on a Friday, um, the Friday before classes start, because usually classes start on a Monday. And so that whole weekend is called Welcome Weekend. And so that entire weekend is just um, a really good time to meet new people, which is what college is all about. And um, um, for mine on that Sunday, right before classes started, we um, got to go on kind of like a little scavenger hunt with a small group of students and then a professor. And so then you really could figure out, okay, this is where I'm going um, tomorrow morning um, and know where all your classes are and all that stuff. So um, it's kind of nerve wracking, but it's also a super exciting time just because you're opening that new chapter of your life. And it's just so many new opportunities and it's super fun. So don't be too scared. <laughs> Me, on the other hand, I was terrified. I hate new <laughs> stuff. Um, but I had an advantage because I moved in um, about two or a week and a half early uh, for dance uh, camp. And I got the opportunity to meet 30 girls on the dance team. So me on campus, like just walking to my first day of classes, I were able to like see all those 30 girls and it was comforting. And that's one thing I really like about the small campus size here is you see a lot of familiar faces and it's um, every Tuesday you could pass the same person and it's just like habit and routine and you get to meet a lot of new people and like make those relationships. Perfect. All right, I think that's all the questions I have right now. I'm not seeing any others in the chat. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to go ahead and you can message them to me or the Grandview one. Megan, do you see any other questions in yours? I do not. Okay, we'll give it a couple of seconds um, just to see if anybody else has any questions. Um, but as we're kind of wrapping things up, make sure that you're taking advantage of some of those links that we provided. Did those pop back up in the chat? Yep. Okay, perfect. So 
Um, as I mentioned before, we would love to see you guys on campus if you are um, comfortable with that for a personalized visit. Otherwise, we can always do that virtual visit. Seniors, if you have not applied yet, we would love it if you would apply so we can get you admitted. Um, freshmen and juniors, feel free to fill out that online info sheet so we can stay connected with you. And then for the couple people who had questions about athletics, I did post that recruiting one. So um, you can always do that. And I did just get a, a question, how long would it take to get an acceptance letter? Right now, we're a little bit short staffed compared to other years. We're missing one of our data specialists. Um, so it's taking a little bit longer. So I would say probably a week, week and a half to make that decision. Um, typically, if you're an above a 3.0 GPA, you should be pretty much good to go um, and expecting that let letter a little bit sooner. Um, always reach out to your admissions counselor if you do have any questions about the status of your application. Um, if you applied and you still haven't heard anything, just go ahead and send us a text message or email. I'll put the email in the chat real quick that you can message all of us. There you go. So you can always reach out to the admissions inbox and we can take a look at the status of your application. So Megan, did you have anything to add on that? I do not, but if you have any questions along the way, don't uh, hesitate to reach out to any of us. We'll always be willing to point you in the right direction. Um, Jay, somebody just uh, messaged me privately Perfect. a question, and they said, what, what should I be doing now um, to prepare? So I'm assuming, like, what should they be doing now to prepare for college? So. Yeah, good question. Do you want to add to it, Maddie, or do you want us to answer it? Um, I, can, I can talk about some of it. Yeah, so. go for it. Um, one thing that helped me is definitely if you know what you're looking um, to study, definitely come visit Grandview and meet with um, a faculty of that um, area of study. So that is something that really helped me. Um, like, so I met with the chair of the nursing department and so she was really, really helpful. And then another thing that is really nice is on Greenview's website under the academics, um, you can see like all of the majors and um, everything that Greenview offers. You can see what type of classes um, you need to take. So I don't know, like I know some, like my high school offered like DMAT classes. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to take a couple um, DMAT credits that transferred here to Greenview. So that was something that was helpful for me. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Um, I always say if your school for some reason doesn't do dual enrollment or AP courses, just taking classes that you have interest in, um, taking classes that will challenge you academically so that you're, you can stay sharp when you go off to college, um, taking math courses, science courses, some of those that can be a little bit more challenging sometimes. Um, staying active in school is always important because it usually keeps you motivated. Um, and then if you're a junior, signing up for the ACT sometime your second semester and keeping those grades up, so. And we are going ACT optional going forward, um, especially for this year. I don't know if it's gonna go past this year, but for sure this year is so if you're a senior, you may not have to turn in your ACT to us, um, but if you have any questions of whether or not you do have to turn that ACT in, all of those requirements are listed on our website under our admissions tab. So we would definitely encourage you guys to check that out and make sure that you meet our admissions requirements. All right, I don't see any more questions. Is anyone else getting any questions? Nope. No? All right. Well, if you guys um, do have any questions for admissions, the students, anything personal like that, Feel free to just stay on. The chat will be on here for a couple more minutes, just making sure that everybody has their questions answered. Otherwise, um, thank you for joining us and we hope to meet with you soon.